Within the past half hour, President Trump has given his first reaction to the departure of his chief strategist, Steve Bannon, from the White House. In a tweet, the president said, I want to thank Steve Bannon for his service. He came to the campaign during my run against crooked Hillary Clinton. It was great. Thanks. Well, Mr. Bannon was seen as the architect of Mr. Trump's right-wing agenda, but had come under fire recently for disagreeing with the president. So he'll return to his role at the ultra-conservative website Breitbart News. Well, to discuss the implications of this, I'm joined by Chris Roebuck, who's a visiting professor of transformational leadership at Cass Business School and also has taken a senior roles in various businesses. This is fascinating. I wonder if you were looking at this uh, as someone who was trying to run a business and not just a presidency. Is mm -hmm. this a good move by President Trump? <laughs> well, you could say, is Trump a businessman? And many people would say that, that Trump actually isn't a businessman in the sense that Tillerson is, uh, and Trump has effectively run a, an empire, a fiefdom around property dealing, which isn't quite the same. So what, what Trump has done is, Trump has moved Bannon out because essentially, A, Bannon disagreed with him, and, and you know, to be honest, describing your boss as a potentially arrogant fool on the same level of the leader of North Korea, even in our own working terms, is not subtle. So it was expected that there would be a response. But also the problem is that now Bannon is outside the tent. Trump loves to have teams that are competing. The problem is that the teams that Trump now has competing in the White House are actually not competing, they're actually trying to pull in different directions. And that is a fundamentally flawed leadership concept. So the suggestion that's coming from many commentators now in the mm. States that, that there is a dysfunctional setup there uh, in the White House, you would potentially agree with? Well, we we'll just have to look at the evidence since he was inaugurated, to be honest. I don't need to make a judgment on that. We can all make our own judgment from what we've seen. But, but in reality, the problem is that Trump is working on a leadership strategy that is fundamentally flawed. He's working on a principle of appealing to a small core base, both in terms of the White House and in terms of his voters, and not bringing consensus. The core principle about leadership being effective is if you can bring everybody together, then the output is going to be one that is much more productive than if you only pander to a small major major minority. So the problem that Trump has is he's effectively breaking all the rules of good leadership to advance himself, not realising in the end it's self-defeating. So now when he casts around and thinks, how does he rejig things, because mm. we've seen how people he's hemorrhaging staff, what would be your advice as Professor of Transformational Leadership? How does he transform things, or is he beyond that because he'll always go his own way? Okay, there are two issues there. Kelly has the ability to create a team that is slick and responsive under Trump. Thus, Trump is unlikely to change because he's now locked into his character of thinking that things that were successful in the past must be successful in the future, even if I'm in a different situation. So the reality of where we are now is Trump is going to go off the rails. Kelly's job is to use all his attempts at mediating to stop Trump going off the rails and when he does go off the rails then try and recover the damage as quickly as possible and also try and keep the competing interests underneath Trump at least vaguely going in the same direction. So that's your advice to him. And on the other hand, looking outside of the White House, there is obviously the, that core, you've said, of, yes. of Trump voters who expect a certain message. And yet, mm. if he's going to look for consensus, he needs to change that. So how does he balance the two and bring in more people? Well, it's interesting. If you look at some of the statistics, 66% of those Republican supporters that support Trump effectively say they support Trump whatever he did. Now, so it's a the, character cult almost. It's they like exactly. Him. They, they, they like the way he... And, and the issue with that is that to some degree, what's going on there is that when we attach an emotional concept to a leader or a person or what we want to achieve, it has the ability to push out our rational thinking. So, and I'm not saying that all Trump voters are irrational, but the, the evidence is that if they say they'll support him no matter what, there is an emotional element there. So what Trump needs to do is to somehow make a decision Am I prepared to at least lose some of my base to then try and get at least 51% of the US population on my side? But Trump's core driver has always been 
within his business career, not one of consensus, but one of I must be the winner all the time. Hence, not apologizing. Hence, getting rid of Bannon because Bannon said something that he shouldn't have said. Hence, lack of humility. Interestingly, all of those things, if you flip over about leaders that have been successful and look at Nelson Mandela, you could say Trump is totally the opposite. Mm. Given that, that tension, essentially, mm -hmm. you were saying there was a way he operated in business and yes. he's now trying to bring that to the White House and it doesn't work for him. Do you think he's not enjoying his job anymore? Do you think there's a sense he may just say, do you know what, this isn't how I envisaged it, I've had enough? I think if you see his departures from Washington out to be re-energised by his base, clearly he is not enjoying mm. all the aspects of it. But don't forget, Trump has to be the winner. Trump never wants never to be surrender. the surrender. Never surrender. And the problem with that is that therefore he's going to stick it through whatever the consequences are for him, his team or the country. Very interesting stuff. Some predictions there. We shall keep our eye on them. Chris Roebuck, thank, thank you, you very much.